In this video lecture, we are going to continue talking about uh, PID control in Simulink. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about how do you tune a controller and how do you implement it in Simulink. So just as a refresher, we talked about how do you put this car in closed loop or basically turn on the cruise control mode. So when you do turn on cruise control, what's happening is your uh, your speedometer is feeding your velocity in into the cruise control computer or into your velocity controller. That is calculating what should your fuel flow rate be, and then it is setting the position of that actuator, which ultimately would be our fuel flow valve. The way to tune a controller, this is where we are trying to obtain the values for what we should use for our uh, proportional controller gain and our integral controller gain, the first step in doing that is to break the loop. So I can do that by just disconnecting my controller from the fuel flow rate uh, variable. This would be equivalent to driving your car down the highway and suddenly you make a step change in your the, the pedal position you have on the car. You're maybe pushing it at halfway and then you suddenly push it all the way. So that's going to take a while for your car to accelerate, obviously, and get up to its new steady state velocity. We will do this in Simulink using our process model of a car. And what we are physically, what, what you typically do is, uh, for this type of tuning that I'm going to show, we are basically going to be approximating our system using a linear first order transfer function model. Um, <clears throat> So to obtain that model, we're going to change our input here. So our input would be u, and after we do that step change, we're going to get delta u. Our velocity we're going to call y, and after making this step change, we're going to get a delta y. This, is the, this would be the velocity as measured from the new steady state velocity relative to the primary steady state velocity. So this is essentially what the results of a step test would look like. We would change the fuel flow rate with a step. That would give us this uh, delta U value. And then we would measure uh, what is our new steady state. So with this fuel flow rate, we would have a steady state of 40 miles per hour. Once we make that big step change, we get a new steady state of 60 miles per hour. We would then calculate what is our process gain. And if you recall from a previous video lecture, that process gain is the ratio of the change in output relative to the change in input. So this is telling us how fast is our velocity change, or how, sorry, how what's the magnitude of our velocity change relative to the magnitude of our uh, fuel flow rate change. What we then want to do is, so this, this tells us something about our process. Specifically, this tells us how much does our process react in steady state terms to a change in our input. We also want to know what our time constant is. So to get our time constant, our time constant is going to be measured as the time that it takes for our process to get to 0.632 of the value of our uh, new steady state. So basically, we'll be taking that delta y here, we would figure out, okay, going from y1 to y2 up here, what's the overall magnitude of change? We'd calculate this new point where y is equal to our first steady state velocity plus 0.632 times our change in velocity. So you can do this in a, a spreadsheet or something or do this in a hand uh, calculation. So that y value would be somewhere here. And then our value for tau is the time that it takes us to reach that, uh, that 0 0.632 of the new steady state. The last step here in the process, or the second to last step, I guess, would be uh, tune the controller. So when we're tuning the controller, uh, normally, if you recall from the last video, we need to figure out what is our k sub p, or what is our uh, the controller proportional gain, and then what is our k sub i, or the controller integral gain. And these are relations determined by researchers that help us make this process a lot easier because it could be sort of arbitrary. So these are tuning rules uh, called internal model control tuning relationships. So after we have approximated our system or our car as a first order transfer function model, 
um, we have identified the process gain and we have identified the process time constant. Now we need to pick one more parameter. This is our tunable parameter. This is called tau c. So tau c is called our controller time constant or our desired controller time constant. So uh, our time constant was roughly 30 seconds from the actual car. If we made a sudden step change, it would take us 30 seconds approximately to reach 0.632 of our new steady state velocity. We can make this happen faster by choosing a controller time constant that is shorter, that is smaller than our process time constant. So if we wanted our car to accelerate faster and be very aggressive, we would choose a value of tau c that is smaller than 30 seconds, so maybe 15 seconds. Um, if we wanted our controller to be not so aggressive, we could maybe choose a tau c that's on the same order of magnitude as the original process time constant, or we could make it even slower by choosing a value of tau c that's bigger in magnitude than our uh, process time constant. So regardless, we would obtain these parameters, tau and k, from the process itself. So these are not tunable things. These are things that we would obtain from data and measurements of our system. Tau C is something that we would pick. That would allow us to calculate our controller proportional gain. Once we have calculated our proportional gain, we can calculate our integral gain by taking our proportional gain and dividing it by our process time constant. So let's go to Simulink and actually do this. So uh, here is our Simulink model. I've already set it up to be in open loop mode. So this this block here represents our whole process model. This model could be much more complex. It could account for things like um, our wind speed and the slope of our terrain and certainly the fuel flow rate and to calculate velocity. So this could be a complex model and it could have behavior that actually deviates from that of a first order, uh, a first order transfer function. Um, but we would still, we would run our model to obtain the data and then approximate it to be a first order, uh, a first order transfer function. Th that will help us get the tuning parameters that we need. So I've put the model in open loop mode as well. Uh, the, these variables, I'm showing these like taking in some data. These are actually having no effect on our outcome right now. So we would, we would want to just isolate our manipulated variable, the thing that we can control and have that have, have our process model run so that we can measure the impact that our manipulated variable has on our desired control variable or our velocity. So I've set this up. We're running for 400 seconds here. I'm going to make a step change from 1 gallon per hour to 1.5 gallons per hour, and I'm going to do that at 200 seconds. So let's take a look at the results. So I would come here. I would look at my results here. So we can see we get to this initial steady state. I recommend running your system to a steady state first so you don't have to deal with the effects of uh, initial conditions. Get to that first steady state and then make your step change and measure the change from there. So here we can see that after we make this step change, we get to 60 miles per hour relative to our original 40 miles per hour. So that would give us a delta Y of 20 miles per hour. When I look at the step change that we actually made, uh, we made that change at 200 seconds and we went from 1 to 1.5. So our delta U would be 0.5. So I've got this spreadsheet that will allow us to calculate the process gain. So our initial uh, flow rate was 1 gallon per hour. Our new flow rate was 1.5 gallons per hour. Our initial velocity was 40 miles per hour and our final velocity was 60 miles per hour. So this calculates for me our process gain, which is the change in Y, so the delta between these two numbers divided by the change in U, so the delta between these two numbers. Um, I also have a formula to calculate at what value would our Y be when we hit one time constant. So I've done this this formula. This is y1 plus 0.632 times delta y. So that gives me our velocity at one time constant. Um, so our velocity at one time constant, now we need to find how long does it take us to get to that velocity. So I'll go back 
to this output here, and I want to find the time at which we get to 52.6 in terms of our velocity. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to print to figure here, so this converts our Simulink scope into a MATLAB figure, and that MATLAB figure has this feature where we can you, uh, put a data tip there. We can point to a, a specific spot on here, and it'll tell us, oh, I hit it almost exactly. So at this particular spot, our X, or our time, is 230 seconds, and our Y is 52.7. I'm going to call that good enough here. So uh, this is that point at which we are about 0.63 of the way to our new steady state. And that that is a point at about 230, so 230.2 seconds. And we made the step change at 200 seconds. So that would give me a process time constant of about 30 seconds. So I would come back here to my calculation spreadsheet. Um, and I would say, oh, I just identified my process time constant to be, we'll call it 30.2 seconds. So here, I've already built in the IMC uh, tuning relationships here, but we would need to select our desired controller time constant. And let's say we want to speed up this uh, process from a time constant of a, a natural process time constant of about 30 seconds to a desired time constant of 15 seconds. So then running those tuning relationships here, this allows us to calculate what the values should be for KP and for uh, Ki, so we would get a Kp of of 0 0.05, and then we would get a Ki of 0 0.0017. So now I know what my tuning parameters should be. I would go back to my Simulink model, and I would put my controller in there. So now. I don't have to go build it all piece by piece with the proportional integral and derivative pieces. Rather, I can come here to my Simulink library, to the continuous blocks, and I can get a PID controller from here. I am going to flip this controller. And then I'm going to come here to my math operations and get this summation block to calculate the error. So I'll grab this block. I want to flip this as well. Connect this to my velocity. So this would be where our speedometer or our sensor comes in. I'm going to click here because I want this to have my sign should be a minus and a plus. OK, now I. Um, I would go into my PID controller, double click on it. That's going to pull up my tuning. I'm going to, so what you'll find is that the PID controller algorithm is actually a bit more complicated than we talked about, um, but we'll keep the parameters fairly similar. So our proportional gain, so Simulink calls this P rather than KP, that's fine. I'm going to plug in my proportional gain here that I just determined with the IMC tuning relations. I am going to plug in my integral gain here, 0 0.0017 with the IMC uh, tuning relations. Click OK. So now my controller is tuned. And I'm ready to go in closed loop. So I no longer need this step change with my fuel flow rate. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to connect my PID loop there. So I'm going back into closed loop mode now that I have a tuned controller. So you can see we've closed the loop. I still need to give this a set point. So now that we've actually got proportional and integral control action in there, I'm going to test this by making an actual set point change. So I'm going to see how well does our controller actually keep us at um, at the desired velocity. So I will go to my sources and grab a step change in here. So let's make a step again at 200 seconds. And now I'm going to put in values here that are velocity. So let's say I want to make a step change from 65 miles per hour up to 
75 miles per hour. I would connect that here. My This summation block will again calculate the error between my set point and my actual velocity. I'm going to go here as well into my velocity scope and I'm going to give this another port. So now I can track my set point relative to my actual velocity and let's see how we do. Okay, it has run. If I go here and zoom out, so you can see that we start out from our car just being stopped. You probably wouldn't actually turn on cruise control at that point. Um, so my car is not actually running, but it, I give it a set point of 65 miles per hour and we gradually get up to that 65 miles per hour. Then once we have reached that steady state, we uh, make another step change and get to 75 miles per hour. And that takes us, you know, about 50 seconds to get there. But you can see we have sped up the process to where now our process time constant probably is about 15 seconds. So we have closed the loop and we have a well-tuned controller. Another thing that we'll want to account for are limits of our controller. So I'm going to go in here, and uh, we don't. We want to make sure our controller doesn't calculate something that uh, it can't actually achieve. So I'm going to go here and go to limit output. What I'm plugging in to this upper limit and this lower limit, these are values of fuel flow rate. So I don't want my controller. Certainly don't want it to recommend negative fuel flow rates. So I'm going to give it a lower limit of zero. I'm going to give it an upper limit of let's say. Uh, three gallons per hour. So this would stop my car from being overly aggressive. So I'm going to go in there, limit my output. I don't know if that will actually impact the behavior of my car. Um, it, it may have. Let's see if we actually hit that limit on our fuel flow rate. Yeah, so it actually looks like we do hit that limit. So it slows down our response a little bit because it's saying it's not realistic to have fuel flow rates of greater than three gallons per hour. So that is how you would tune and implement a PID controller in Simulink. So I'm just going to quickly review this process for controller tuning. So first we would close the loop. Um, sorry. After we have done our step test, gather the data and tune the controller, we, then we would close the loop and actually implement our controller. All right, so here are those steps. So we would do an open loop step test. We would uh, reach a steady state, make the step change. We would measure the output, delta y over the change in input, delta u, calculate our process gain. We would calculate the, the, the point as measured by our output or our velocity in this example for, how, uh, for the value after one time constant, which is given by the formula there. We would identify our process time constant which is the time at which uh, it takes us to get to that value. We would then choose a desired controller time constant. Having a time constant that is smaller than our natural process time constant will speed up the process when we go into closed loop. Making it bigger than our process time constant will slow down the process. It'll make our controller less aggressive. Uh, we would then use the tuning rules to calculate the proportional controller gain and use our tuning rules to calculate the integral controller gain. We would close the loop by connecting the controller to the, our actual MV, and then we would do a set point step test to verify the results. So now you know how to tune a controller in Simulink and how to implement it.